Enigma Consortium is a network of scientists who work together to pool a lot of data together on brain images and genetic information so that they can find answers to questions about what causes differences between people in their brain. And this is also relevant to psychiatric diseases uh, because the brains of people with psychiatric diseases differ. Well, Enigma is actually a scientific study that is run from many, many different countries. And so you'll see scientists in genetics and mathematics and radiology all working together from different medical centers and different universities to pool their information and ideas about brain disease. So the idea is that we gather together uh, very large data sets by asking labs all around the world to pool their data. So then that enables us to do much, much, much larger meta-analyses of those data sets. And so all of that is coordinated by Enigma. There must be 15 to 20 different groups and they study everything from you know, schizophrenia to ADHD to addiction to autism to epilepsy uh, to depression. I think some of the main publications that have come so far in terms of the psychiatric groups are uh, ADHD, uh, depression and uh, schizophrenia. The Parkinson's Enigma Consortium uh, now consists of 15 different laboratories in 10 different countries uh, that each contribute between a few tens of scans to a few hundreds of scans. Together uh, we have in the order of 2,000 pledged uh, scans of Parkinson's disease patients. Uh, some of the big groups that are contributing are uh, the group in Oxford, uh, groups in Amsterdam and Nijmegen. Um, Moscow is a very big contributor. Uh, Stanford, uh, we have uh, scans from Canada. So really we're trying to, um, to get a global coverage of scans so that we can uh, really cut across uh, nationalities and race uh, to really look at the differences between Parkinson's patients and controls regardless of any other factors. Enigma ADHD studies brain differences related to ADHD across the entire lifespan. We use uh, methods both meta-analysis as well as mega-analysis. So we collect individual brain data uh, from uh, patients and controls where we can perform meta-analysis so we keep the structure of a study in function or we can pull all the individual data and this gives us the opportunity to also study uh, effects of age and clinical effects on the brain. The Enigma Major Depressive Disorder or Enigma MDD Consortium consists of around 31 sites across the world um, about 15 different countries and we found some intriguing results showing that basically the level of brain abnormalities or even um, the specific brain abnormalities are really dependent on um, the stage of the illness but also on the level of brain maturation probably. So we, we see a very strong difference between brain abnormalities in adolescent depressed patients versus adult depressed patients. So that indicates that the impact of MDD on brain structure is really dependent on, on the stage of life or the stage of disease. Well, one of the biggest discoveries Enigma made is really getting a detailed picture of how each brain disease is affecting the brain. And so we see that in depression, the memory systems of the brain, appear to be badly damaged. In other disorders such as Parkinson's or anorexia, there's very selective changes in the brain. And now that we can understand on a brain scan how these diseases look, we can begin to see if different treatments or different interventions are helpful in changing the brain back onto the right track. We really want to understand the, the genetic origins of brain asymmetry. So at the moment, we really don't understand how it is in the early embryo that the two halves of the brain start to develop slightly differently to one another. So it's a fundamental question in human neuroscience. And the other is whether genes which make people different in their brain asymmetry also contribute to differences in the way that we think and differences in our cognition. So it's important to understand the, the kind of genetic basis of brain asymmetry. It may contribute to, to psychiatric disorders. Addiction can be conceived of as a brain disease, you know, at least in part. And there's good reason to think that there might just be interesting individual differences in brain structure and brain function. Uh, so trying to understand that uh, is really critical. So we have identified a few brain regions that seem to show uh, differences across all different drugs. This is a primary processing method where we're extracting measures of brain structures. We use those as a measure of you know, brain differences between addicted individuals and, and others. Because we have the sample size, what we can do is essentially two separate analysis. So we can split the data in half, test for effects, and then ensure that that effect holds up by replicating it in the second half. And I think this is a real strength. Up until now, we've uh, used a meta-analytical approach 
That means that all the participating sites don't need to share their raw scans and their raw data. Um, they can just keep it at the local sites and we send them scripts, harmonized scripts across all sites to process quality check and perform statistical analysis on the data. So the Enigma studies are published uh, online. You can find uh, the largest studies of psychosis and depression and dementia. And if you really just look online for Enigma and the brain and Google it, you can find some of the discoveries that have been made by all of these scientists around the world. By getting groups together from all over the world to contribute data, they've been able to do studies in tens of thousands of people, which is the first time this has been done. And that really gives the statistical power to find uh, genetic effects which has just simply not been there before in previous studies.